today I want to share with you from the book of Proverbs and I want to talk about um, walking in the way of wisdom or you may see it I advertise it a call of wisdom or a preacher called wisdom how many times have you heard someone say it to you or you heard them telling someone else I told you so I told you so we don't like to hear that you know somebody tells us you know your, your husband or your wife you know I told you so <laughs> but someone saw the choice that you were making the direction that you were taking in life and they knew from past experience and from just wisdom that well this is not gonna end right it's not gonna end right I know that's why I thank God for you know in the church we've got the elderly, we've got the seniors, we've got the people with the gray hair. And we've got those who cover their gray hair. But we've got the, the seniors. And um, because they can speak to us based upon their experience. And they can talk to the young ones. I want to appeal to the young ones, listen to the elderly, respect them. Listen to them when they speak to you. Because they're speaking to you out of the wisdom that comes with aging. And that wisdom that comes with aging only comes with aging. It doesn't come with anything else. You know, some men have said, you know, that group of friends you follow, they're going to get you into trouble. They can deny you from reaching your full potential. Or they will tell you, you know, if you start using soft drugs... That can be a doorway to even harder drugs and to addiction, and it can eventually destroy your life. That relationship that you're in, and you think it's innocent, it can destroy your marriage. You know, I've seen this happen so many times. It keeps happening over and over again. It's like the story of life. It just keeps going around. It's the same thing keeps happening over and over and over. As the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. But I want you to know today that God's word is filled with nuggets nuggets of truth nuggets of wisdom that you and i can take and apply to our lives the psalmist said this he says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path there is an entire book in the bible called the book of proverbs the book of proverbs that is dedicated to wisdom and god wants us to be filled and led by the holy spirit you know especially as pentecostals charismatics you know we love to talk about the spirit and the spirit and so on but God also wants us to be wise I shouldn't say but I should say and he wants us to be led by the spirit and also to be wise and too many times Christians we disregard the scriptures we disregard the nuggets of wisdom that are there in the word of God and we think it's going to work out all right because I'm just going to pray to Jesus and I'm going to ask him to forgive me of my sins and I'm going to ask him to just help me again and work a miracle and take me out of the situation that I find myself in. Beloved, we need to walk in wisdom. Walk in the way of wisdom. You see, the Spirit of God, you know, if you want to say, well, I'm, I'm led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. In Isaiah 11 and verse 2, it says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, that is Jesus, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So the Spirit of God is not against wisdom. In fact, He is for wisdom and He imparts wisdom. In fact, that is the reason why I think many people who are living for God, who are living for Jesus, it's not only because you know, the Lord makes us, um, gives us the power to overcome sin. But the Lord, by the Holy Spirit within us, He gives us the wisdom to walk in a particular way, in the path of wisdom, so we can avoid a lot of the pitfalls that are happening to people around us. You may say, well, okay, that verse you quoted, Pastor Mike, refers to the Holy Spirit and Jesus. It doesn't refer to me. But this is what Paul said. This is what Paul said. In Ephesians 1, 7, he says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus... The Father of glory may give you, may give you, the believer, the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. So Paul is praying that God is going to give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So the Holy Spirit doesn't only come so that he can anoint us and we can feel good and we can rejoice and so on and feel refreshed. Or we can speak in tongues and pray in the spirit and, or, or we can prophesy or we can work the words of God. He's also the spirit of wisdom, beloved. Wisdom. 
He also goes on to say that the eyes of our hearts will be enlightened, will be enlightened. Even James encourages us. James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. If you lack wisdom, ask of God. So it would serve us well, especially our younger ones, our young people, our teenagers, our youths, to read through the book of Proverbs. In fact, the entire Bible, the entire Bible, and apply it to our lives. But we're focusing on, on Proverbs. You know, here's some of the Proverbs I like. Proverbs 1, 10, just to give you a taste, you know. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Do not give in. Don't follow your friends into wrongdoing. Proverbs 4, 23, keep your heart with all diligence. Or with all vigilance for out of it come the issues of life manage what goes into your heart keep your heart and mind pure he says in Proverbs 6 and 10 a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man in other words he's saying don't be lazy it's gonna to lead to poverty there's another verse that says Proverbs 12 15 the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but a wise man listens to advice the way of a fool is right in his own eyes every one of us well the fool especially thinks that whatever he or she is doing is the right thing to do but the Bible says a wise man listens to advice to advice in other words don't be a smarty pants and think you know everything Proverbs 15 and 1 says a soft answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger, telling us how we should deal with people when they're angry and they're yelling and so on and, and raising their voice and they're speaking to us. You get in a conflict in the workplace or even at home. It says a soft answer turns away wrath. Today, I want to focus on Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 to 33. I'm not going to read a text for you right now. I'm going to read it as we go through um, the verses. And first of all, I see here the preaching of wisdom. The preaching of wisdom. We want to walk in the way of wisdom. This is what the writer says in Proverbs 1 verse 20 to 22. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. She raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, and I trust you're looking into your Bible, Proverbs 1 20. Make sure you open your Bibles and you're turning there for me. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. She speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? How long? In these few verses, we see the perennial preacher, the preacher called Wisdom. He is the ever-present evangelist. He's not bound by space or by time. He's not bound by culture. He's preaching all over the world. In the streets, the marketplaces, the noisy streets, in the cities. And he's calling out, or she's calling out. Preaching to crowds and individuals, you know. Schools, in the universities, in the business places. Wisdom is preaching. Wisdom is calling calling out aloud to us you know many people ask the question how does everyone in the world hear about God hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ and they ask the question what about those who never heard are they gonna go to hell things like that of course when they ask such a question it excludes the person who's asking because they've already heard and God, I want you to know, God has a way of reaching people. And he's also a just God. The Bible tells us that God reaches us in nature. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. God is speaking to us through nature. He reveals himself in nature around us. God also speaks to us um, in scripture. The Bible, the word of God. The bestseller year after year after year. And don't be critical of the Bible. Don't be critical of the scripture unless you've read it. And you listen to the words of Jesus. And don't listen to the lies of people who say that the Bible has been changed. It has not. You can rest assured it has not. God is able to preserve that word. God has also revealed himself in the person of Jesus who came 2,000 years ago. 
died on the cross and rose again on the third day. But then God also speaks to us in our conscience. There is that inner voice that tells us that there is a God and there is right and wrong. You know, and that voice also speaks to us and it allows us to gauge morality. Right? There's a voice of wisdom, the voice of rationality. And I want you to notice the intensity of her cry. She cries aloud. It's not just this whisper. She is shouting. She is crying. She is screaming to us aloud. In fact, in this pandemic that we have around us, we should be looking at it and asking, what is God trying to say to the world or to say to me as an individual? God is screaming to us through this pandemic. She begs. She pleads. God is calling to us throughout our lives. He's shouting to the world. He's saying, make your life right with God. Make your life right with God. He calls people to come to him. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is calling. He's calling every day to us in our lives. The question is, are we listening? And will we respond? You know, the Bible also tells us about Jesus, who was crying out aloud, who was also calling. The Bible says, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and he cried out. He didn't just say it. He was crying out loudly. He said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. He says, whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. He said, I am the bread of life. If you're, you're hungry, come to me. I am the bread of life. I am the water. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the good shepherd. Come to me so you can have eternal life. Wisdom, we look at these verses, wisdom calls out specifically three types of people. First of all, he calls out to the simple. He says to the simple to come. He says, who are the simple? The simple are individuals who lack wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And their lack of knowledge makes them wide open to any opinion that is out there. They haven't thought things through. So they would say things like this. I like to keep an open mind. I like to keep an open mind. Meaning anything and everything they're open to. Regardless if they hold two different opinions which are contradictory, they have an open mind. Or they would say things like, I'm a skeptic. You know, have you reached people like that? Say, I'm a skeptic. Now, ask the question, are you skeptical about your skepticism? Are you skeptical about your skepticism? You know, these are people, they are simple-minded. They have no opinions. They just open up. They lack knowledge. They lack wisdom. They lack understanding. They are taught through nothing. So the simple-minded are people who are committed to nothing at all. And we have a lot of people like that. A lot, they're not committed to anything. And I think that's the way to go, to go through life. Don't make a commitment. They didn't want to commit to marriage. They don't want to commit to a relationship. They want to commit to a job. They don't want to commit to a career. They don't want to commit to God. They don't want to commit to philosophy. And they're just doing things their way. Following the ways of the world. So they're easily deceived. You know, they're exposed to various influences and so they can be deceived. They are encouraged to choose the way of wisdom. You know, but it's all, not all bad news for the simple as against the other two. They have some capacity to change this condition. Instead of listening to all the so-called new things around us, why not go to what is common sense? What is rational? What you can trust? What is proven? What is true? The word of God. No, regardless of how many people are trying to be critical of the scriptures and trying to say it is wrong and it is myth and this and that. People are trying to slam the Bible. They've been doing this for years and years, decades and hundreds of years. They're doing that because the Bible rebukes them of their sin. But the Bible still holds true. It's still solid today. Wisdom also calls out to the fools. Now, while the simple love to be open to any opinion... And they're committed to no opinion at all. Fools are fixed 
in the correctness of their own opinions. A fool is someone who is fixed in his own opinion and however it is not a good opinion their opinions are opposed to God opposed to God's word that's what the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God and we can call that the atheist fool the atheist fool there's also the materialist fool who runs after material things in this world thinking that life is about the things we can um, consume and we can add and we can fill our lives with the material things eat drink and be merry for tomorrow we die that is the materialist fool so the fool is someone who's fixed in a way but is opposed to God's way they are morally corrupt their behavior is irrational out of their sinful heart comes all sorts of evil and wickedness they say I know what the Bible says but I'm choosing to do something quite differently I'm living my own life doing things my way then we have the scoffers. They are the worst of these three. They are hardened in their sin. They not only oppose God, um, they not only set in their ways against God, but they are vehemently opposed to God, His Word, and His people. They hate the way of wisdom. The simplest commit to nothing. The foolish commit to His way. The, the scoffer goes further. He's actually going to attack the way of God. And in life, you will see people moving. This is what happens in life. You will see people moving down that trajectory. And they're going to move from being simple-minded, committed to nothing, to being fools. They're committed to evil, to being scoffers. Then they're mocking and scoffing at the things of God. There are people who would proudly tell you, I actually was shocked when I was at a funeral one day. And someone told me, I'm a heathen. And as if he was proud. Of saying that I'm a heathen and these things just tell you how much the scriptures are so true the Bible says the time is coming in the last days men shall be haters of God so this preacher called wisdom is preaching to everyone worldwide and he makes a promise he says in verse 23 if you turn at my reproof behold I will pour out my spirit on you and I will make my words known to you Look at that. If we will turn to God, if we will turn to God, he's going to help us to walk in the way of wisdom because he's going to give us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit imparts wisdom to us. And he said, I'm going to reveal my words. I'm going to open up the scriptures to you so you can understand my word and the way of wisdom so you can walk in the way of wisdom. And this year ahead, 2021, beloved, I don't know where you're at, what direction you're heading in life, but I pray today that you will walk in the way of wisdom. But even though wisdom is out there and she's preaching in the streets, in the marketplaces, in the cities, in the towns, and so on, what do we do? We choose to disobey. Verses 24 and 25 of Proverbs 1 says, Because I have called and you refused to listen. Have stretched up my hand and no one has heeded. Because you have ignored all my counsel. And would have none of my reproof. Verse 29 says, Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Look, look at those words there. I called, but you refused to listen. You ignored all my counsel. You hated knowledge. You didn't run to it. You hated it. You despised it. You did not choose the fear of the Lord. That tells me that we need to choose to fear the Lord. We need to choose the way of the fear of God. He says he despised all my reproof. That is the story of man. Think about it. That is the story of mankind. And throughout our lives you will see that. Where people are walking away from God. Walking against God. Totally disregarding what the scriptures tell us. This is the path that many take in life. And over and over we see people around us making the wrong choices, gravitating to alcohol, to drugs, overspending, being in the wrong company, infidelity and in marriage, cutting corners, lying, compromising and all that. And you warn them, that friend is going to break up your home. Your desire for wealth opens you up to greed and corruption. It will be a snare to you. 
and years afterwards, decades afterwards, you see the sad outcome. In my own life, unfortunately, I've seen people choosing the wrong way to persist in the wrong things. And now they end up and they're very sorry. They're discouraged and they're very sad as a result. I pray that we will choose the way in, of wisdom, walk in the way of wisdom, so we can protect ourselves from these dangers. You, you know, and you may say, Pastor Mike, I'm good. I go to church. I listen to the word of God. I'm in church every Sunday, but not now for COVID. You know, I've been going to church for years. But you know what? It can be the same for you because it is not a matter of whether you go to church or not. It is a matter of if you are obeying the word of God. You're walking in the way of wisdom. You know, we refuse to obey God. You know what we're doing? We are doing exactly what our forefathers did. Adam and Eve. God told Adam, eat of any tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it. You're going to die. What does Adam do? All the trees, the thousands of trees around there, this one that was forbidden, Adam and Eve, they took that one tree, from that one tree and here we are reaping the consequences of that. And today you and I, we know very well the things that are for, forbidden, but yet we seem to gravitate toward it. That's a sinful nature. We want to do that, which is going to hurt us. Married men and women, you know what is forbidden. Don't eat the forbidden fruit. What about the story of Cain? God told him, Cain, why are you angry with your brother? If you do well, you will be accepted also. Deal with your jealousy. Handle your anger. You know, take control of yourself or else you're going to end up in trouble. Did Cain listen? No. He went out and he killed his brother. So you and I shouldn't be surprised when we talk to people and we, say, and we tell them don't do this or don't do that and they don't listen to us. We shouldn't be surprised. Because, beloved, sometimes even when God speaks to people, they refuse to listen. Here was God himself. Adam didn't talk to his son. God came and he spoke to his son Cain. And he said, why are you angry with your brother? If you do well, you'll be accepted. But Cain refused to listen to the voice of God. Both of them disobeyed. This is just another case of, I told you so. God could have told Adam, I told you so. If you eat that fruit... You will be judged. You're going to die. He could have told Cain the same thing. I told you so. So we disobey. And then what happens? We reap the consequences. Beloved life. You know. We talk to people as they get older. They say you know. Things are complicated. My life is complicated right now. My marriage is complicated. Because divorce. Another set of children. My finances are complicated. Um, so many things are complicated in my life and so on. But life can be simple, beloved. We complicate life because of the, the mistakes we make, because of the choices we make. We reap the consequences. Proverbs 1, 24 to 27. <clears throat> because I have called... And you refuse to listen, I stretched up my hand and no one has eaten, because it ignored all my counsel, would have none of my proof. God says, I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you. This is wisdom speaking. When terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Now those, when you read verses like you said, what? Those are not good words. Those are very harsh. That's rude. You know, that's, that's not nice for you to tell me something like that. You know, wisdom, you will laugh at my calamity. You will mock when terror strikes me. When terror strikes me like a storm, my calamity comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish comes upon me, you're going to laugh at me? That's not fear. But you know what? People say this many times, haven't they? The truth hurts. The truth hurts. Many of us... We want to persist in doing the wrong, and yet we want things to turn out right. We choose the pleasures of the moment, not realizing about the consequences down the line. Life is serious, beloved. Life is not a game. 
So many people think that it's all just fun and joy. They just live, we don't care, you know. But those things have consequences. It's serious. We don't have another chance at life. You've got one life to live. And then we're going to um, have to give an account to God. The Bible says, it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Too many people take a light approach to life. They take chances. They live on the wild side, they say. Take a walk on the wild side. How many young people die of drug overdose? Of accidents? Of suicide? The Bible says, they hated knowledge. And so they're going to eat the fruit of their way. And have their fill of their own devices. Verse 32. <clears throat> For the simple are killed by their turning away. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. You may say, that is the Old Testament. I love the New Testament. And I love Jesus because he loves me. Regardless, he does love you. He does love you. But even Jesus tells us that we need to obey his word. He says, you know, the persons who, hear my, who hears my word and he does them. It's like the man who built uh, his life, built his house upon a rock. The storms came, the winds came, the rain um, fell, and that house was standing. But the one who hears my word and he does not do them, does not obey them, is like the man who built his house upon the sand. The storms came, the winds came, blew, and the rains fell, and great was the fall of that house. We need to be obedient. We need to be obedient to the word of God. This is what Paul the Apostle said in Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. He's warning us not to be deceived. Do not deceive yourself or do not let other people deceive you. Life is serious. Says, Listen, God is not mocked. In other words, you and I cannot mock God. We cannot mock God. He says, whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Whatever one sows, that will he also reap. If you sow generosity, God's blessings will come upon you. If you sow a healthy lifestyle, good habits in your life, you will reap that in the years to come. If you sow, you start saving and saving and not overspending. And you're saving and you save for retirement, you will retire in a good position. But if you always keep maxing out your credit cards and just shopping online and shopping and shopping like there's no end, well, you can struggle. You will struggle financially. It's not a matter you can. You will. All right? If you do not pay attention to your, to your husband, to your wife, to your children, right, you can end up losing your family. Is that worth it? If you are lying on the job, you are, you are pilfering on the job, you can be caught and you can be fired and you can be without the job. Whatever one sows, that will he also reap. The one who sows to his own flesh will from, will from the flesh reap corruption. The one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Is it all bad news? No, no, no. The Bible says this, whoever listens to me, Proverbs 133, whoever listens to me and will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. The warning of life, the word of God, the call of wisdom, is not only for this life, it is for all eternity. God has given us his word, his manual, to help us in this life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word is there to lighten the way ahead of us, to show us the way to walk in. Too many people are disregarding the word of God, and I say even more so Christians. Christians, they're not studying the scriptures. They're not reading the scriptures. They're not meditating on the scriptures. They're not applying the scriptures to their lives. You and I, we've got to be diligent to be obedient to the word of God this year ahead. Put aside all the other stuff you're reading and listening and, and looking and spending time with. Make sure that first thing in life, your first order in life, is that you spend time in the word of God and listen to what he has to say. Let him direct your life and plan to obey it also. The Bible says um, that he, he wants us to choose the way of eternal life. The end of the matter is this. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. What is life? People ask. What is life? What is life all about? Well, the wise man told us, he said this, Fear God and keep his commandments, 
for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good and evil. The Bible tells us God so loved the world he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God calls us today to choose the way of life. To choose Jesus. To choose the scriptures. To choose his way, not our way. Not our way. And beloved, I want you to know that God is going to bless your life. God is going to make your way successful when you are obedient to the word of God. There is a danger in the church today around the world, the evangelical church around the world. Um, there is a danger. The danger is the disregard of God's commands. And we are just want to capitalize on the love of God and the grace of God. God loves us and God's grace is there for us. But we are just want to be blessed and we're disregarding the command. Anytime people talk about oh, being obedient to God, they say you're being legalistic. But beloved, when you read the Bible, Rev Genesis to Revelation, you will see how much God expects us to be obedient to him. Jesus said, on that day, many are going to call to me, Lord, Lord. And I will say, depart from me. I don't know you. I don't know you. This is what God told Israel. He says, listen, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life so that you and your offspring may live. He says, if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, be careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. You know, there's a part of the Bible that says God's going to make it the head and not the tail. That is dependent, that is contingent um, upon us being obedient to the scriptures. It doesn't just come like that. He says, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. If you walk in the way of wisdom. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of, shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of the ground, the fruit of your cattle, and so on. Blessed shall be your basket, your kneading bowl. Blessed you shall be when you go out and when you come in. But he said, if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God or be careful to obey the commandments, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. God says, if you walk in the path that I have settled for you, you're going to reap the blessings. But if you turn your back to me, if you refuse to listen to me, then you're going to reap the consequences of that. And then you're going to still have to stand before me to judge you. I call on every believer today, everyone listening today. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all, I ask you, what direction are you heading in life? Would you open your heart, would you open your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to be your savior, to be your Lord? Turn away from your sin, repent of your sin, and begin to walk in the way that God wants you to walk. And save yourself of the consequences of sin. If you're a believer today and you're saying, well, yes, I, I follow Jesus. But you haven't really quite been obedient to the word of God and walking in the way of wisdom. Make a change. Make a change and say, this year, 2021, I want to draw near to God. I want to make a decision to live for Jesus and, and surrender my entire life to him. You don't want to end up in a state where people, someone points to you and say, you know what? I told you so. I told you so. You don't want to head in that direction. So have you been walking in the way of wisdom? Walking in the way of truth? Walking in the way of the scriptures? God calls us to repent and turn our lives over to him.